Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to more Wargame Red Dragon with South Africa. Um, today, not one, but three replays, or actual gameplay sections. Um, they were live recordings, but the commentary is post-commentary. The South Africa deck keeps bringing me mixed results. Sometimes you get some really awesome fights, sometimes not so much. Um, let's just have a look at some of these replays or some of these battles and show you what happened, what went well, and what went not so well. So, starting off with the first game. We're in hell in a very small place. Not a terrible map for South Africa, because you got quite a few opportunities to flank, you got quite a few opportunities to move forward, and my plan in this case was to go for the middle. It's an advantageous spot in Foxtrot if you can get it, and I'm going to try and get it with a Logim. Unfortunately, that is not South Africa's strength, because the Logim is a mechanized unit and thereby slow. So I need to try and get there first with some other units, secure the position, wait for the Logim to catch up, and then get that force to slowly move into Foxtrot and secure the position with the Logim there. Hopefully suppressing anything and everything that comes over the various roads towards, well, let's say Golf and or Charlie, depending on where you want to push. Slight defensive force into Golf. I was not going to do any operations there, uh, nor on the other side of the river. It's um, not an entirely feasible area for me to push into. And, well, that's not entirely true. You can definitely push into Bravo with South Africa, but... When you're in a forest, you're basically as fast, or potentially as slow, as any other units. So in that case, I don't really see any benefit to going there with my deck. I try to play decks, of course, to their strengths, um, and the forests just slow me down, in case of South Africa. Unless you can ambush. Unless you can ambush. In that case, yes, it is fortunate. Now, um... A little bit of defense. This is Casper K cars transporting buffaloes. And I also have an SASF team for the far left. This way I hope to stop anything if it decides to come down the road. Now I'm currently finding a private, as you can see, which uh, I think is good because I'm still very much experimenting with this particular deck. I am definitely not confident with it yet. Let's see, I think we're just about ready here. You can see I'm still not quite sure what to bring where. I decided to go, to go with a couple of uh, Rattle 20 with Milan uh, attached with infantry to try and get more forces there. But something doesn't quite go right because I have the, the sticky selection bug. So I couldn't select a unit and instead I ended up selecting a lot of different units. Um, which means that I think not only the Rattle 20 with the command infantry deployed but some other Rattle infantry deployed as well. There's the SASF going over to that town there. Rattle 20 Milan's forward. Casper's forward. Logim eventually forward to there. And the rest of the column there as well, at least for now. Mortar there. Calling in another cactus because I really do not want my Logim to come under attack. Even though I already have a cactus in that column. The Rattle 20 that dropped off the... What was it? Buffaloes? No, it dropped off the command. Is in a decent position, but these guys are not. This is something that... I'm not sure. I think it happened when I had the sticky selection issue. And I'm not sure what happens then, but you click on a unit, it selects it, and just keeps the unit selected. It's weird. Anyway, dropping more Rattle 20 Milans in the forest, trying to get a wider front secure, and we have a contact. Plenty of contacts, in fact. And interestingly, there is a column of SU-122 54s. This USSR deck is opening up aggressively uh, with a meat shield of SU-122 54s, but they very quickly get killed off by the two SASF squads. The Logim, unfortunately, due to the terrain being a bit wonky here, is not able to get a couple of good shots, so I'm forced to pull back. He has a MiG-25 PD, so apparently he's concerned about aerial safety. And this is something I only recognize now, and this is why. He has a T-72BU. A Logim is a decent tank, but it is definitely outclassed by a BU. So I decide to call in a Buccaneer and try to snipe the BU. 
Unfortunately, I really don't have a lot of reconnaissance here. At least, not anymore. Because most of the recon that I had died. The cactus... Uh, sorry, the, the buccaneer comes in. Hits the BU and kills it. That was the priority. I don't mind losing the buccaneer. Because the buccaneer is um, about half the price of the T-72 BU. I don't mind that. I can come back from that. It's much more difficult for him to come back from losing a BU. So now I'm fairly confident. I'm going, okay. I took out the BU. Yes, there's a lot of Mostrowki. Yes, there are quite a few transports. But these are all MTLBVs. Which means that unless they get really close, they're not going to be that much of a problem for a Rattle 20. So, time to get some reinforcements. Um, what shall I call in? Mechinf going over the left. We've got a Rattle 20 suppressing any infantry, but there is a T-72 Bravo over there. And there's more Modus Telki running down that hill. I got some infantry there, but not enough. So I need to try and buy myself some time, and I decide to fire a couple of mortar shells on the motors coming down the hill. Now, one thing I still need to learn, well, I still need to learn many things, um, an important issue that I still have with South Africa is that I don't buy enough units. I need to keep buying unit after unit after unit after unit. And um, while it's, I think it's okay to have a buffer of about 60, 70 points, so you can fairly quickly respond to a threat, if you find that you need NTR, for example, uh, you can still buy that, which is usually a more pricey unit. But when it comes to getting uh, units on the field, I had a bit of an issue. Because I didn't bring them in fast enough. And on top of that, I'm fighting a pretty fair fight, uh, which is not a good deal. I'm fighting Bokop against Modestrelki. And, well, I need to use my fire support vehicles and my maneuverability, and I'm not using either. So right now, it's mostly a straight-up fight. Which is not good for South Africa. You don't want straight up fights. You don't want extended engagements. They are get in, punch, and fall back, generally. That seems to be their best playstyle. I did quite a bit of reading into them, uh, various sources, and the majority of people agree that you have to be, and it's, it's a bit weird, you have to be okay with giving up terrain when you're playing South Africa. It is just par for the course, because if you don't give up the terrain, you will get killed off. Now there's more Modestoki 90. Uh, I pushed the rover Milans in there to drop off the Bokop, but the Milans are now, of course, not being used to their full extent. Finally, bringing a recon unit, although it's not that strictly required, since the recon ranges are not that, well, not that important, not that difficult here. I want the Bokop to take out the MTLBVs first, so I decide to turn off the weapon. At least the uh, machine gun. The Bokop... Oh, sorry, the Rattle 20s there are just hosing down the Modestrelki as they can. Rushing forward to try and get to the buildings there. It's a bit overexcited because I am not the only one there. I was hoping that he wouldn't actually have units there. He does. He did put a, unit there, a couple of units there as a defensive force. Uh, wise move. Because otherwise I could have potentially cut off that entire line of reinforcements. That was my hope. Didn't quite pan out that way. But just the, the sheer speed with which you can reinforce in South Africa is keeping me alive here. It's critical. Firing some mortars at the target, getting a Valkyrie. I, for some reason I bought the Valkyrie and put it in Charlie. I'm not sure why. Makes very little sense. One thing that I can tell you about South Africa is that um, no matter what sort of battle it's going to be, you're going to have a very interesting time. Battles with South Africa are never boring. <laughs> because you live young, or you, you you live fast, you die young. And either you win uh, beautifully, or you die very, very slowly. Uh, although many units can, and generally will, get one shot. Now, those look to be T-55. I never actually see the unit. But the Milans, believe it or not, are hitting something. Yes, I didn't think it was possible either. But the Milans, there you go, it killed something. So proud of this Milan. And you can see that this private, my opponent, is starting to shift his tactics. Or at least that's how I seemed... Or that's what seemed to happen. Because he started bringing in more heavily armored units. Against all my light transports and autocannons. The only bigger gun than an autocannon that I have is the Logim. It's the only unit that I have. And, well, 
I don't really know where to use the log in this case. So I decide to move it here with the rest of the forces. So I'm trying to push that town. And meanwhile, he's trying to push down with more Modestrelki. And aside from 10 Mechinf, I have nothing to stop 20 Modestrelki. Hilo comes in at my 24. Merely pull the log in back. Move the cactus up. I need that thing dead. But as I'm pushing, he's pushing too. So there's Modestrelki coming down the hill. And it's not just 20, it's 40 at this point. With the support of their MTLBPs. The log in um, does all sorts of weird shit here. It starts to expose its flank to a T-72A. It's a cheap tank, the T-72A. It's, I think, a third of the price of the Logim, something to that tune. And the Logim, I don't know, I'm losing reconnaissance here or something. I can barely see the T-72 there. The Logim is just parked sideways on. And the T-72A understands that and spots an opportunity. So the logam takes a full hit from the T-72A, another one, and it dies. At least I think it was the T-72A. So, calling in a reconnaissance bird, because I quickly wanted to get information, because I saw another tank there. Uh, I already have the Buccaneer out, but I don't have a target for it. And unfortunately, the MiG-25PD is still around. There's the target, the, the uh, T-72BU. I spotted that. That's why I called in the reconnaissance bird. Unfortunately, where I have the buffle in the middle of the screen now with the Rattle 81, I got the Rattle 20s, not the Rattle 21 or 20 Milans. So unfortunately, I am unable to at least start hitting that thing with missiles. Now, lacking vision on the BU, I decided to take out some of the meat shield, the T-72B. Uh, it's not a great target for the Buccaneer, but, well, I was trying to kind of kite this thing over my air defense. Uh, unaware that the cactus had died. So now I have no kill on the MiG-25 and I have a dead Buccaneer. Not a great situation so far. Rattle 20 is uh, still packed up, still trying to generally suppress Modestrelki. And this is where I would love something like a BMPT. Because yes, the Rattle 20s are decent at suppressing enemy units, but there are a ton of Modestrelki over there. And I just don't really have anything that can very quickly kill them, except potentially for the Hilo, the 87 Beta. So, getting that thing in. There you go. That starts the wipeout mode stroke real quick. And then I spot a duo of Tors. Time to call in the Cheetah. The Cheetah D on the move. Uh, this is an expensive investment for him. So I try to suppress it with the mortar. The Cheetahs move in. Or sorry, the Cheetah singular moves in. It does not really seem to want to fire yet. But one shot hits. And since that is a really high HE value, it kills them both. Of course, the Cheetah doesn't survive. But I believe you can get three Tors in a deck. I'm not 100% on that. At any rate, uh, two of the Tors are dead. And... Oh, sorry, the Cheetah survived, actually. Two of the Tors are dead. And that means that with the MiG still around, I still have to be a bit careful, but I really need to get rid of that heavy tank. In the meanwhile, over on the far left, I still have the MechInf and the Rattle 20. And, well, I just need to cause a distraction. Something. So, time to call in the Rattle 20 and start flanking his position. Unfortunately, I don't really take the right road for that. Now, moving on. Just trying to get some uh, suppressive force in the infantry. There we go. That's the beta doing more suppressive damage against the Modus Um Lacking the enemy air defense tour, I should be able to do that without getting punished. Unfortunately, the beta, I think, is out of rocket pods at this stage, but it still has a very potent autocannon. What I'm trying to look for is that T-72BU. But he is playing it very carefully. He's just moving forward with infantry. Just infantry, infantry, infantry. And I can keep calling in the rattles to some extent. At some point, I will run out. And when that happens, I'm going to be in trouble. Note also how his fire support is a T-72A. Uh, both of my missiles miss, by the way, from the Buccaneer. Uh, the T-72A is a perfect unit to use against South Africa. Simply because I can't really do that much against it, short of calling in a tank. Now, 
One thing that I wasn't quite sure of is why there is a UAZ there. Oh, and there's a Tunguska as well. Uh, why is there a UAZ in Foxtrot? Why not in Echo? Because that's a two-pointer, but he put it in Fox. If he put it in uh, Echo, and he's moving it towards Echo, he would have already started ticking some points, but I think he may have miscalled this unit. The Rattle 20 has made it into his base. Unfortunately, right on top of the spawn zone. So I immediately start coming under fire, I'm immediately detected, and there is very little that that Rattle 20 is going to be able to do. I was still too distracted from the middle, so I don't even bother checking out what the CV is. That, however, is a Shilka, I think. But I didn't find the CV. Um, he captures Echo, so he's in a plus two. And it just keeps coming. There's T-72s coming in, there's more Modestrelki, and a constant flow of MTLBVs. The Royvalk is able to take out quite a few of his units, but firing Royvalk missiles just to deal with a couple of MTLBVs is way more than they deserve. <laughs> it's way more attention than they actually deserve. You can also see I completely forgot about the use of the Valkyrie. Uh, it's still sitting in my, <laughs> my front line. It was not supposed to be the front line, but it is at this point. And I finally decide, okay, his CV might be there in Echo. Uh, let's fire and then run away. The Royvalk gets killed because I did not pay attention to the Tunguska. And I don't really have much left in Charlie, which is my two-pointer. This guy is doing a really good job just pushing me out of it. And I'm trying desperately to call in more infantry, but I'm starting to run low. I'm considering switching some units around to get more autocannon fire or potentially Rattle 60 transports or Rattle 90s, although they are more expensive. The Casper K car is nice because it also has an autocannon, but the rest are eh, not great. Now I'm going to make another mistake here, so um, see if you can catch it. Yeah, the Rattle 20 took a hit from a T-72A, interestingly. As you can see, I'm not sure what to buy. My... what is that? My Bokop are empty. I don't have any more. I just called in the last single Rattle 20 with the Bokop. And it seems like this guy has an almost limitless supply of Modestrelki. Because he probably has a card of Modestrelki and a card of Modestrelki 90. Um, plus probably some other stuff. Maybe more than one card of Modestrelki. I'm not sure. There. That was a terrible buy. Call in a command unit when you have no front line? Right. It's because I was concerned about Echo. Nonsense. I should have been concerned about my own sector. I call in the Cheetah D. I use it there as an aggressive ground attacker. Uh, it worked. It wiped out quite a few of the infantry units, but uh, at the expense of the Cheetah D. So it's not a good trade there. And at this point, I have almost nothing left. We're just... Well, the whole deck is depleted. Well, not so much the deck's depleted, but my guys are depleted. He's smoking up the position of my buffaloes next to the town, or in the town next to the river there. Or canal, it's not a river. And I'm just unable to do much. So I decided to call in Unitas. Uh, and that is a very, very quick way to deal with them. And I'm a 24 VP. So I get the Oliphant forward. Um, I just don't know where to go. The Oliphant is a terrible buy. Yes, I would have been able to stop the plus two, but arguably it was much more important to take out the T-72BU. Because now it is just a matter of time until he finds it and kills it. And uh, he has lots more forces, both potentially available and actually in Charlie than I do. So, yeah, there's not that much that I can do. You can see he's beautifully rushing into his smoke. My buffaloes are unable to fire. Uh, my last, uh, not, well, maybe not strictly my last, but my buccaneer gets attacked. And I can't do anything about it because the cactus out of missiles... And, well, this is basically where I decided to call it quits, because I don't see myself coming back from this fight. Had I flanked heavier with more forces? Maybe. 
Maybe I've could have caused enough of a distraction. But you can see I'm using South Africa here in a straight up fight and it just doesn't work. You're not supposed to do straight up fights. It's not what South Africa does. Yeah, the buffaloes get completely overwhelmed, which means that that road's no longer defended. It's just a bunch of motor strelki and, well, it's basically done at this point. So it's GG, and that's the end. So, that little stunt got me a beautiful kill-death ratio of uh, 0.5. Not even that. If you want to counter South Africa, just bring a bunch of not-too-heavy tanks that prove difficult to kill. And um, just a load of infantry. The guy over here, and I cannot pronounce his name, uh, he played really well. He just completely outplayed me. So that was one of the experiences with South Africa. Let's have a look at another. Undaunted by that defeat, I pushed on. And I decided to... Well, I didn't actually decide. I got Highway to Seoul. Considering my fast mobility on this deck, I decided to go with very, very limited forces on the left and focus more on the right. I wanted to try and get golf, and immediately I mess up with the CVs. Not dropping off my CV early, although, well, I guess in this particular case it's not critical. The majority of my forces is going to the right, Golf and Charlie. That's where I want to try and make my stay. Because my thinking here is, if I can hold those sectors, um, I might be able to put CVs in them and then start to contest slash attack the other sectors of Echo and Delta. Of course, while holding Fox. I don't know what I'm fighting yet. I'm not sure. I still have to find an encounter with an enemy. And in order to get that, I am sending forward a recon helo. Um, it's just that the recon helo wasn't part of the initial scouting force. And it's going to take a while before it actually reaches the front line. Now, I'm starting with a Roycar ZA HVM over there. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it was the right call. Simply because that vehicle, while it is good against enemy helicopters and planes, um, it is limited in ammo and it's fairly expensive. In this case, it might not have been the right buy. I get a Caspier K car uh, and it immediately encounters a Tsifa E. Fortunately, the thing attacks the buffaloes, allowing the SASF, although panicked, to get a couple of shots off against the Tsefa. But guess what the Tsefa is doing over there? It's not just trying to intercept forces, of course. It is there on an escort mission. I decided to send a uh, couple of forces to the buildings that you generally want to capture. So Unita, Buffalo, stuff like that. And not just one Tsefa, which could have been uh, an outlier, but we have an entire Israeli deck. This is going to be painful. And it's about to begin. You see, the Israeli forces have this, this lovely unit. It's not the Magach 6. Because the Magach 6, uh, with all these Milans, I can handle. Believe it or not. Yes, the Milans, they actually hit again. I mean, it's twice in a video. I, mean, I had to play two different battles, but watch this. It's that little thing. HVMS. The thing fires 29 rounds a minute. And it's picking off all my infantry. All the vehicles are getting killed off. Some with the infantry alive. Well, as they were getting ordered to evac, some not so much. So with that, um, I lose most of my forces very quickly, at least the transport for them. Thankfully, HVMS does not come with the ability to deal damage against infantry. I mean, short of killing them inside of their vehicle. But now I'm facing uh, Bokop, or rather the Bokop, are facing the Nachmachon, which is basically a tank. And my little uh, LAV, or um, not LAVs, my little anti-tank weapons are not going to do that well. The enemy also has infantry in there, in that building on the far left that I'm trying to capture. I do manage to drop off one Unita squad, but it's not going to do that well. And interestingly, he calls in the Lahatut Mepats, which is a, for the Israelis, fairly cheap anti-tank helicopter, to deal with the non-existent vehicles that I have here. But then again, he might not know that. The only thing that survives is the Roikat, a Buffel, and one Rattle, I think. 
So with that Laha Tut in the area, I decided to move the uh, ZHVM back and, um, well, watch your flanks, General, because there might be forces there. Speaking of flanks, I'm trying to reinforce here as much as possible, just sitting by scout line, not doing much of anything with it. The ZHVM gets killed by the Merkava on the left. It's a Merkava 2A, it's a grenade launcher spewing vehicle. I've lost everything. I surrender. Great match. Now, arguably, I quit that last one way too soon. Because the highway on Seoul is a map that I potentially could have come back from, although with that exceptionally weak position on the right-hand side, I just decided to quit. You know, a little bit of range quitting there. Uh, it was not having a good night, but still, um, I decided to show the game anyway. Now, next match. We are facing Corporal Black Bear, and I have dropped down to Sergeant after losing those two previous matches. In this case, I'm going to go with um, a somewhat substantial force towards the middle of the map. And in order to get there, I need to make sure I don't get air attacked. So there's the cactus. We get reconnaissance from the infantry once they get there. And in the meanwhile, I'm going to have to rely on some other vehicles. Uh, the Bokop in the Milans. I also had the Buffalo 85. There's the XH-1 Alpha. It's going to scout out ahead of that column to see if something's happening there. A little bit of infantry on the right. And more importantly, over on the far right, two Elant 90s, two Roycat 76, and one Cactus. In a match I showed a few days ago, that worked to flank, because people don't expect it. Now, for good measure, this time around I also throw in an SASF, because there are a few buildings in his spawn. Now, over for the far left, I have exactly the budget to buy one SASF in a K car. That's it. So, time to start this match off. And this time around, with limited forces going towards the middle, I hope, I hope I can get it. SASF to that side, the entire column down the road, down the road, and immediately into the forest. Preferably fast. If I get detected there, at least I might be able to do some flanking. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to have to, well, hope that I can make those units useful. It's a bit of a gamble. Casper K-cars, Casper Mark II's barreling down the road. There's the two uh, Rattles, there's two uh, Rattle Milan, and there is the Hilo flying overhead. Immediately call in some new infantry. That's the Buffles transporting the infantry. And we find a Cactus. Oh, sorry, we find a Tiger, which is very far ahead. So the Cactus engages, takes out the Tiger. Unfortunately, I only... Well, in, in essence, fortunately, I only lose the Hilo, but it could have been a hell of a lot worse. Without the helo, I'm not sure exactly what I'm facing, so I decided to take a little bit more of a circuitous route to get to the waypoint there. And meanwhile, the right-hand side has encountered nothing. And, well, there's a Leclerc there. So I have a bit of an issue. Um, I have a Leclerc. I have a very limited visual on it. And I need that visual in order to get the HGM from the Buccaneers to hit. I've taken a position here. Parapath, uh, the Parapathfinders, the B-10 Unita, as well as the Buffaloes, and they're immediately eliminating an Amex-10. The Leclerc is dashing out very far. I think he was a bit too eager for blood, because the Buffaloes are there in that building, and they're already firing HGMs at it, but he popped out too far from a smokescreen. The Buccaneer comes in, misses the first shot, and I think it is not the Buccaneer who gets the kill, but the Buffaloes. They side shot the Leclerc and immediately take most of the Fang out of that push in Bravo. At least, that's my read on it. The Roycott on the far right with the rest of his group is still preparing for the ambush. Rattle 20 Milan, moving forward. Uh, dropping off the infantry just as a precaution here. Calling in on the recon bird. And he pushes forward with a VAB. I'm not exactly sure, but he might have been fishing, seeing what I had. And, well, I was going to be a bit more cautious there, because I'm not sure whether he has anything there or not. Send the force down there, off the road, in case he has something on or near the road there to protect it. B-10 Unita engaging the transport, and over here we have a bit more than I can chew. It's 20 Legionnaires and another 14 Fallschirmjäger. Uh, the Buffaloes are there, doing their level best to hold the building. But against that much opposition, even with support from the Unita, it's a bit much. Interestingly, 
the Rathal 20 with their mech inf have made it across. So it seems like in his two pointer he doesn't have much. Now, time to call in another unit just to defend the side there. And the Falsham Jaeger are uh, making a move. That's the only thing that I can really target with the unit. Uh. My uh, Buffalo 85 there have died, and I'm still trying to get more reinforcements towards the middle. Another XH1 Alpha to try and get my own base a bit more defended, because I had absolutely nothing. Trying to decide on the best avenue of approach there. There's a Leopard 2, interestingly. There was a Legionnaire there, an AMX-10, and a Leopard 2 now. And the Unita... Well, actually, no, it's the SASF that takes the kills, not the Unita. Rattle 81, Mortar. I know that Legionnaires have taken the building. Uh, I want to try and get it back, but in order to do that, I might need more than an infantry squad. Over here, I have the Rattle 20s and the Mechinf squarely next to the road. So time to push those rattles through the forest, wait for the rest of the ambush column to push in, and just have a look at how the rest of my forces are doing. Get the rattle to preemptively fire at the building that the legionnaires have just taken over. Uh, fairly sure the Falschermeger are still there too. And uh, the Elons are a little bit stuck in the mud and on rough ground, but the ambush there, or the, the flank attacks, almost ready. And over here, I'm just basically allowing him to have Bravo for now. I'm not sure what he has, because I took out a few of his forces. And I'm not sure if he actually made it into the main town with any units. But at this point, I don't feel like I'm ready to try anyway. There's another tank coming in. Looks like a Leopard 2. The Rattle 20 is through the forest on the other side, in case this attack fails. Cactus in the edge of the forest, in case he calls in a plane or a helo to counter this. And interestingly, there's a, an artillery piece firing from the back line, which I think could be a Caesar. So the Roycats are moving forward, the Aelands moving forward, the Caspers are going directly to the town, and the other Aeland is moving to the other side. Yeah, it's a Caesar. Uh, the other Aeland's going to the other side in order to potentially intercept a vehicle as it moves back in, or to try and provide support against other units. Now, interestingly, there is something in that town, but I could barely get a good look at it. The Roycat 76s find it, so I think, wow, if it's in the town, it must be some sort of command infantry. There's a VLRA there, so it's command infantry, right? Uh, no. It is not command infantry, in fact. It's a freaking commando parrot team. I have no idea what they're doing here. Um, flank defending, maybe? but I just couldn't explain it away. But, it means I still have more work ahead of me, and there it is, command unit. Elon 90 pushes forward, and a 20-point unit takes the kill, and gets the command vehicle knocked out. And that battle brought me to this result screen. High amount of kills, low amount of losses, although I'm not exactly sure if this level of kills is accurate, because I killed the command unit. And I think that automatically kills every other unit on the board, thus giving me a potentially skewed picture here. When it comes to kills, um, of course the Cactus took out the Tiger, the Leclerc did get killed by the Buffaloes, and as for the rest, well, it really wasn't too special. I didn't really have that many engagements, and based on the kills that I'm seeing here, that was definitely not 1,455 points. What I wanted to show you with this video is that South Africa is very hit or miss. I'm slowly starting to get the hang of it. Um, so far with the flank offensive with the Roycots, I've had basically two for two. When I do a flank like that, I get away with it. And um, when it happens that you can get this flank, it's difficult to come back from. But not every map is suitable. Punchbowl, yes. Highway to Soul, well, you're gonna have to have a lot of patience and hope that you don't run into one HVMS that's parked somewhere near the base, because otherwise you're going to be in trouble. And of course, Highway to Seoul also has that second spawn. Do I like South Africa still for ranked? Yes. I think it's a great deck, and as somebody pointed out in the comments, it's potentially the only location, it's the only game mode where you can make it work, because you have the element of surprise. Nevertheless, um, 
it's, well, I mentioned it early in the video, it's always a ride. You never quite know what you're going to be in for, but it's going to be an interesting part of your life. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think about this format of uh, quickly showing three different games because, well, they're all so brief. They don't really warrant their own video. Looking forward to your comments in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, give it a like. And otherwise, I'll see you soon for other content.